Hi everyone. The, the subject matter I want to discuss is actually something that I meant to have as part of my last video, but it was getting too long and I thought I'd go ahead and break it up. But first I did want to give a shout out to a YouTuber that uh, I actually recognize him to see him, but I don't think I'd seen any of his content before tonight. And he's very, very good. He, uh, he does speak to the presuppositional apologetic and also other basic theological and philosophical issues. He's very eloquent and uh, he seems to be very knowledgeable. I think he was a believer and so he understands scripture. And uh, best for me is that he's very, very, uh, he's very down to earth, I guess. And uh, yet he speaks very pointedly on the subject. So uh, the name of his channel is Philosophical Vlogs. And I did notice some of the people that have subscribed to my channel over there in the comments section of his. So some of you are aware of him. But for those of you who aren't, I think you owe it, you owe it to yourself to go and check out his channel and subscribe uh, if you feel that, it's, uh, that it warrants it, because I sure do. And I'll go ahead and link below the first video of his that I had seen. Now, the point that I wanted to discuss actually relates to my last video where I was talking about how incoherent it is when uh, Christian and Christian apologists um, sort of uh, uh, you know, tell us that we should actually, you know, you don't have to tell your other atheist friends. You can just sneak off in private and ask God to come into your heart and, and wait for the signs. And uh, how incoherent that actually becomes in light of all the other uh, in light of what they tell us about their faith and about their, their deity. Now, one of the things that, uh, that does come up sometimes is a, uh, a sort of uh, gatekeeper mentality with Cy Ten Bruggenkeep in debates. So he will use scripture and say things like, you know, that you know God exists and the fool hath said in his heart, etc., etc. But of course, when his opposition would say, well, let's unpack the Bible, let's, let's get into some Bible verses and discuss it. Oh, suddenly it's, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to discuss the Bible with unbelievers. That's something for a Bible study. Now, of course, the reason for that is that um, there are contradictions in the Bible. Now, this sort of relates also to something that uh, Karen S. Said, uh, did a video on recently, and her video was quite good. Uh, there were a couple of points I wanted to expand on, and that is this whole concept of former Christians. Uh, those who have left us were never among us. Now, Cy Ten Bruggenkeit will say that if, if God is the Lord over your reasoning, you can't be reasoned out of the position of Christianity. And so former Christians, um, they, were, they would never have God as the Lord over their reasoning. They were Lord over their own reasoning, and that's the only way they could have reasoned out of a position uh, of Christianity, of faith. Now, really, what it boils down to is uh, Sai is being, you know, there's, there's some mincing of words here because uh, even Sai is not claiming any kind of direct, extra biblical, personal, divine revelation. Uh, his revelation comes from Scripture. And uh, as the fellow in Philosophical Vlogs uh, very well pointed out, that uh, he has no way of knowing that that entity is genuine. Uh, for instance, you know, Sai would make the claim that uh, you can't know anything unless you know everything or have connection with someone who does. The problem is, the best you could say about God, if that were the case, is that he claims to know everything. Uh, because unless you know everything, you can't know that that other entity knows everything. So at the end of the day, Sai will say that God is the Lord over his reasoning. But really, when it, what it all boils down to, in, in basic, no bullshit t uh, terms, is that he's just saying that he's going to believe this book no matter what. And that's it. There's no more than that. Uh, you know, that, that's what he's saying. And so that's why Bible study exists. Because when you're going to take a book that does have contradictions in it, and I'm sorry to anyone out there who's going to claim that it doesn't, it does. The contradictions that you say don't exist, you've just explained away. And really that is the purpose of Bible study. And that's why skeptics aren't allowed. Because they're not going to stand for um, this, this, you know, really what Bible study amounts to is a meeting to decide how we're going to make things conform. We're either going to manipulate the text so that it makes sense, uh, you know, well, that's a parable, that's not literal, well, that is literal, and, uh, you know, so we're going to either make the text conform, or, or some will say, will say things like Fernie Boy, and they'll say, no, no, geocentrism is the model of the solar system, and in fact, the universe, 
um, because the texts say that, and others will just modify the text to sort of externally change its meaning. And uh, like I say, that's why, that's why skeptics aren't allowed, because they're not going to stand for that. So at the end of the day, really what's happened is, Sai has uh, uh, presuppositionally decided that he's going to believe that book, no matter what. And I suppose that's okay. I just kind of wish you'd been more honest about it. Thanks everyone for watching. Oh, and one more thing, because there's always one more thing. I hate to be a stickler for details, but logic kind of demands it. When Eric Hovind and Cy Tinbrigg and Kate assert that you can't really know anything without knowing everything or having revelation from someone who does, well, sorry. There's one thing I can know without needing to know everything. And unfortunately for the apologist, the uh, house of cards that is the rest of their premise kind of falls down from that point. Thanks for watching.